Dr. Kostarfin, thank you so much for sitting down with us on this extremely busy week, I'm sure, for you. It is. It's, um, we're leading up to the first day of school, and this is one of the most exciting and busy times of the year. It's a, it's a great year to be an AISD. So what are you most excited about? Well, I'm, I'm really excited about our transition from the old state assessment to the new STAR end of course exam assessment, plus the fact that we are coupling that with really trying to focus on what we're calling whole child, every child. It's our campaign in the district um, after this big transition to really kind of renew our faith in ourselves and in our teaching and in our ability to serve kids well. Uh, you know, when you make a transition to a new state assessment, you don't have all the tools that, um, that the former assessment has, ha has had. So, for example, you, know, you don't have a lot of practice tests. You don't have a lot of, um, uh, you know, kind of uh, footnotes on how uh, to test prep kids and things of that sort. So for us, we really had to, you had to lean on your teaching skills, you had to lean on your schools, you had to lean on your school leadership to just be sure that kids had a successful experience and that we were really testing what they know and what we want them to be able to do. And uh, the good news for AISD is that we're number one uh, for compared to the big eight urbans in that transition, uh, being very successful in our, um, in our performance at the elementary and middle school levels, especially in Algebra 1, and, um, and we were doubly excited about um, the fact that even when we looked at federal expectations and accountability that we were number one in the urbans again for the largest you know, pass rate of schools uh, meeting and exceeding those expectations. So you know, it was a, there's a big sigh of relief, you know, a little tension. Um, you know, the, 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 the valve had loosened a little bit. And what I hope our staff and our community takes away from the experience is that we are good. We can rely on ourselves. We can actually relax a little bit more and just teach more. Teach more and kids will learn more and that's how we'll be able to achieve our vision and our goals. Well, we did an in-depth piece end of last school year on state testing. Um, some people saying that it was taking you know, teaching out of the classroom was more just kill and drill. What are your thoughts on state testing in general? It's sure to be a hot topic this next legislative session. Do you think it's too much? Well, I think accountability is essential. Uh, you know, we are, we are in urban systems where we have incredibly diverse student bodies. And before the age of accountability, there were large numbers of children of color, children in poverty, special education, language learners that honestly were not getting a quality education. And we have lots of data to prove that from, you know, from the early stages of accountability. But, um, but then, you know, we've kind of tipped the scales the other way, where, especially in Texas, it has been incredibly heavy-handed, and I'll say it's been a death blow to staff morale. It's, uh, it puts people under a lot of pressure that if balanced just a little bit, if we could just get a little more uh, flexibility, a little more autonomy, uh, allowing teachers to really be able to teach and be creative in their, in their craft and their practice, and still holding folks accountable, I, I'm certain we will see better outcomes. When we do that in schools where we have the flexibility, uh, we always see where they do a better job. So if we could get some balance in that, it will make a big difference, I think, across the state and certainly in Austin. Our staff told us, we did a lot of diagnostic, assess diagnostic assessments last year, and uh, they, we did a, a school culture and climate survey, and we also followed up with uh, the Broad Foundation's uh, diagnostic audit of the school district. We were one of their you know, schools to watch or um, based on their criteria to compare us to world-class standards. And the takeaway from all that data was very clear. Teachers really felt like um, around morale that, uh, that the, the intensity around accountability was really too much. That it indeed, um, you know, lessened creativity and certainly um, took the control out of them being able to teach at rigorous levels um, right out of their hands. They also talked about concerns of the pacing and the sequencing 
of curriculum and being able to teach kids and reteach when necessarily ne necessary when we were when when you get through all the standards it was just moving at such a fast pace and then ultimately um, at least one of our takeaways as an organization that was that was tied to the um, the budget crisis was that they were really worried about job stability and so if there's some way for us to take the pressure out of those things I think Texas as a whole will feel a big lift in outcomes for kids when your frontline staff knows they will have a job that we respect them as practitioners in the field and that yes we want to hold them accountable but we want to balance that with their ability to be um, good educators and we're going to do everything that's within our control in the system to uh, balance the scales and the rest of course we have to negotiate with the legislature and the federal government.